Welcome to a new edition of the Neon Jazz Interview Series with legendary jazz trumpeter Wadada Leo Smith on the 2021 CD sets, Trumpet and Sacred Ceremonies. On June 21st, 2021, he talked about the world of COVID, what he did during this time, the state of music, and his new box sets. In a half century of recording, he has never stopped exploring the parameters of the form and instrument. His love of music and being on this planet is always evident and refreshing. Enjoy this interview. Hey, it's Joe hey. Domino with Neon Jazz Radio in Kansas City. How you doing, Joe? Hey, I'm good, man. How's life? Oh, uh, pretty cool. I'm enjoying it. Good, good. Hey, thanks for taking a minute out, man. I appreciate it. Oh, no, it's my pleasure, baby. Let me ask you, first and foremost, before we get into your box sets, how how have you kind of survived through this pandemic now that the world's kind of waking up right now? How, how has this time been for you? The time for me has been magnificent. I've enjoyed every moment of it. I believe that the future of the planet depends upon us shutting down at least uh, 30 days out of a year, two, two, two weeks at a time, uh, mostly in the winter time at the beginning of fall, like around September, and at the end of the year or beginning of January, uh, another two weeks. And the reason for that is because human beings cannot be trusted to be open in open range simply because... Uh, they don't care about anything but pleasure, such as uh, power, sex, and money. Yeah. So I've enjoyed being away from that, that kind of herd of people and that kind of climate of thinking. I've been isolated. Most of uh, my interactions have been with my family. That is my immediate family, my daughters, and my grandchildren. And it's been absolutely wonderful. And I talked to a lot of people around the planet, and they all are sick and sad that, that the lockdown happened, and they can't wait to get back. And the truth is, is that I don't believe there is a getting back. There's an illusion about what's happening right now because it's summertime and because all the governments are concerned about money, and therefore they've all opened up their society because the only thing they care about is money. Well, I mean, at the end of the day, I guess what we should understand is Mother Nature will always win. No matter what we do, we do not have control over things. Well, if we stay out here, Mother Nature won't win, you see. And that was the point I was trying to make is that 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 little short shutdown that we had actually revitalized the planet. But the planet cannot continue to grow the way it was going before because um, if you look at it, all of the live creatures that, that humans consume for food is one of the biggest source of solution on the planet, you say. And those kind of things were kind of curtailed during the time of this pandemic. I don't wish a permanent pandemic. What I wish is, is that, that humans would take control of their lives and try to uh, balance it with what's happening on the planet. Well, you've had wonderful box sets come out during this time, trumpet and sacred ceremonies. Talk a little bit about what it means to have music come out now and what it means to you. It, it basically, you see, the idea of what it, like, like, like I always made music uh, from the very beginning for people to, to actually engage with. And if they engage with it, on any kind of level, superficial or a grand level, it didn't matter, and it still doesn't matter, because just the amount of engagement that a human being can take towards any art project uh, is beneficial to them. The more or the greater or the, the depths in which they engage, of course, it's better. But uh, even if you get a little piece of it, it's like, like the difference between a person who has never felt rain fall on them and those who do get a few drops. For someone that's never really delved into your catalog and they actually get these box sets, what do you hope they get from this? What do you hope they feel from this collection of art? Well, it, it depends on their experience. First of all, we all engage all our encounters with whatever it be, food, um, uh, art, you know, or work. We engage them with what kind of experience we've had. Music is, is one of those um, 
I don't want to use the word sacred, but it's a special kind of tree for human beings that allow them to get away from their ordinary day and experience something that's extraordinary or unusually different or something that's, that's rare. And that's what we hope as artists that people appreciate about our art, whether it be music or some other kind. But music is a perfect forum for that because it doesn't have a replacement on the planet. Whereas everything else does, you know, like like the color of red and et cetera, all that stuff we can see on the planet, the ideas of images and shapes. We see all the images and shapes on the planet, but sound and the way in which it's constructed as a work of art, that's not on the planet. It has no identity on the planet. How did your art change or how did your art intensify during this time of quarantine? Well, it only, it only uh, I was able to produce more. Uh, mainly because I wasn't traveling uh, 160 or 80,000 miles a year. And I wasn't playing anywhere from 40 to 55 times a year. So that meant that I had more time to work. And I didn't have to travel to do it. I could do it right at the house. And I also, you know, uh, did some recording. Uh, uh, I made a couple of uh, really high quality videos, video performance or video concerts. And um, I did a lot of mixing of music, of which some of the results are from are coming out now. So it was a it was a grand time to to um, be in that house, able to work, able to go to a studio for three hours uh, at a time, and uh, mix stuff. One person in the studio in the booth, one person in the main room. That's me and mixing stuff. So I got a lot done. You know, when we do get back to live music and fans can go and see performers, what do you hope we all collectively realize about the power of live music? Well, I would hope that people will just be grateful that those kind of moments they can experience again. It's, it's hard to say what people would get from something, you know, because, uh, like I say, it all depends on their experience and what kind of... Uh, appreciation they have of odd kinds of events. But you would always hope that they get the best that they can out of it and that it would in some way shape, uh, help them to shape how they make their choices as human beings. How do you see either yourself or the jazz community emerging out of this stronger and better? I don't know so much about the jazz community. I've never been part of it. I'm basically an outsider. I consider my music creative music. The people that like my music, uh, I'm, I'm appreciated of it. Uh, the people that, that actually experience my music and think it's jazz, I think that they, they will find a harder possibility of appreciating it because it's, it's not that, that language. So I don't know how those people will, will, will experience it, but for those that like creative music, they should be able to do fine. Wadada, thank you for taking some time out today for Neon Jazz. Good luck with everything. I really appreciate it. Well, thank you so much. And looking forward to peace to Absolutely. you and have a good day. Thanks for listening and tuning in to another Neon Jazz interview where we give you a bit of insight into the finest players in Los Angeles, New York City, Kansas City, and spots all over the world giving fans all that jazz. And thanks to Wadada for his time, music, and story. If you want to hear more interviews, go to Famous Interviews with Joe Domino in the iTunes Store. Visit Neon Jazz at YouTube.com. And for everything Neon Jazz all the time, go to the neonjazz.blogspot.com. Until next time, enjoy the jazz, my friends. Neon Jazz.